Welcome to the Holland Financial Report. It's Wednesday, January 12th, and we've got two big topics to talk about, inflation and what to expect in 2022. To help us unpack that is our Vice President of Investments, Robert Marr. Robert, you heard the setup. What do you say about inflation? Where are our numbers going into 2022? Well, the numbers, the latest CPI, the Consumer Price Index numbers, just came out this morning at 8.30. And the expectation for the Consumer Price Index was an increase of 0.4%. Came in at 0.5%. For the month of December. For the month of December. Um, now you take away the food and energy, which everybody consumes, but that's gets you to core CPI. And the expectation for that was 0.5%, but it came in at 0.6%. So for an annual, on an annual basis, when we got November's number, it was 6.8%. And the expectations for December year over year were 7%, 7.0. So because we overshot that by a tenth of a percent in both categories, we're at seven, seven plus percent for the past year in inflation. And this is the highest recorded inflation for an annual basis since 1982. February 1982. So basically 40 years. Yep. Okay. It happens. It happens. It happens. There's a lot of reasons for that. Okay. So I think the takeaway there is that inflation isn't necessarily subsiding quickly this, this terminology around transitory, we can kind of throw that out the window. And we have several okay. months ago. And well, fine, so did Jerome Powell as well. So. Well, we're going to throw it out one more time. <laughs> okay, okay, good. Because <laughs> I think it, that people need to be realistic about it being around possibly for a while. Correct. Okay. All right. And then taking that and looking at where we are going into 2022, let's talk about where things look potentially like they will head. And again, we don't know exactly what's going to happen, but... What are you seeing, signs, portends of where we go in 2022? Well, a lot of, there's the saying that you don't know where you're going unless you know where you came from. Right. Um, and just to, to look back very quickly, um, in 2020, um, when COVID hit, we know that those re or those lockdown stocks, and I'm going to use Zoom um, as an example, you know, uh, very um, obscure company, which bursted into the limelight, um, v no earnings whatsoever. Uh, so um, no earnings, but extreme price appreciation. Right. Right. So um, we're going to put up a graph for you. Um, so with IVV, which is which represents the S&P 500, it's the purple one on your graph. Um, in 2020, after the dip in March and April, uh, it ended the year up 18.4%. Uh, now those there's um, an ETF there, ARC Innovation ETF led by Kathy Wood. Many people may have heard of her. That fund 156%. So completely- Gain in 2020. In only one year, yes. So completely annihilated the S&P 500. Now let's fast forward to 2021, last year. How did both of those funds, S&P 500, almost 29%. But if you look at that ARK Innovation Fund, which by the way, is only about 40, 43 stocks. So you're talking less than one-tenth of the stocks of the S&P 500. Um, you look at the S&P 500, like I said, 29% growth, but this fund, negative, almost negative 24%. So enormous difference. Um, so two things I want to uh, take away from these two charts, from Good. 2020 and 2021. Number one, and the most obvious one, is that those high flyers, the two securities that were number one and number two in 2020 were number three and four in 2021. That's number one. Number two, though, if you look at the orange one in 2020, that's IVW. Now, what that is, it's an iShares ETF that has about 240 growth stocks. So it's much more diversified than the ARK Innovation ETF, um, but it's still growth. So you have two securities which are growth oriented. And in 2020, both did well, but in 2019, one lost 24%. And the other, the IVW, is still better than the S&P 500. That gained almost 32% versus S&P's 29. So what I, 
that tells you is that you can have two different securities within one asset class and have completely sure. differing effects. So looking forward in 2022, one of the morals of the story is that, okay, growth stocks are always going to outperform. No, um, IVW did outperform in both 2020 and 21. It may continue to do so in 2022, but you probably wanna look at consumer discretionary, those cyclical stocks that do well with, um, with an growing economy, which we're in, um, slowly but surely, despite inflation, our economy is growing. Um, we have an expansionary services and manufacturing sector. So those equities are lower value than the growth ones, which are at pretty nosebleed valuations still. Um, so those are the type of stocks you want to, an investor might be wise to okay. look at. So some other additional takeaways. Um, number one, um, prior performance, not necessarily indicative of future results, right? Of course. We've got to be real careful uh, buying last year's winners. That's right. Um, we want to remain diversified because just be because one particular asset or one particular type of investing did exceedingly well, we don't abandon our diversification strategy. I mean, that's really risky. I mean, now we're talking about betting on black versus red, or I'll bet on the house as an advantage of the zero double zero, which happens to be my bet if I do roulette. <laughs> uh, so uh, we, we need to be remain diversified, um, look at where things may go and, and make some smart decisions, but keeping things diversified is gonna be where we need to be. And that's very difficult to do because sure. some investors put everything, okay, S&P 500, I'm just gonna sit there. And that has worked very well for them in 2020 and 20, especially 2021, right. since the S&P did better than everything else. Um, but you know, you look at not only the value stocks, um, but international stocks, the emerging markets, which we've spoken of before on the show uh, with China, what they've done with their regulatory crackdown in 2021, emerging markets ended up negative last year and most people expected them to be positive. Is this the year of emerging markets? Perhaps. Um, we are definitely in our more aggressive models, have an allocation to emerging sure, markets. Absolutely. But last year, it pulled down performance, of course, because we weren't 110% in the S&P 500, right. nor should you be. Right. So it, it, it takes discipline to stay diversified, but you, it will allow you to sleep better at night knowing that your volatility isn't going all over the place. All right. Very good. And, and one final point I'll make for the viewers is that um, investors tend to have a very short-term memory. Yes. So uh, Robert just made a great example He's mentioned the quote unquote dip in 2020, and the S&P 500 went down what, 30, 40 percent? But ended up right. But ended up good, for, well for the year. But the point is, is you know we get a little bit away from these events, and you go, we, I mean, even us as investment people say it's a dip. Mm -hmm. Well, it was felt a lot more than a dip when we were all experiencing that March of 2020. Exactly. So just remember, we've got to have a diversified plan to be able to stick with the plan and not be all over the place. Okay? Exactly. Good. Very good. All right. Thank you for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be back with more um, Holland Financial Report to help you plan stronger. Mm -hmm.